time I'm finally finishing my studio. Well, I gotta have this done pretty quick because I got a session late tomorrow afternoon, so I, I gotta have this done. This, this didn't really go how I planned. So I guess I'm actually starting from scratch now. This has always been in my plan. Uh, it just took a while for me to be able to get this done and, and get everything ready to go. But I'm pumped. So let's start right here. Get my, my trusty ProTech out. I'm so pumped about this, you guys. I have wanted one of these for a long time. Yes. Look at that bad boy. Okay, I got the sidecar all put together. Went super easy. Actually, that was like way faster than the last time I did it, probably because I've done it before. Uh, I wanna walk you through some of my favorite features about these Danger Fox desks. And uh, there's some really cool stuff about these, so let's take a look. Okay, so firstly, uh, these armrests are really, really great. I mentioned that in my last one. Like, the quality of this, it just feels so, so good. Obviously, the looks of it is subjective, but I absolutely love the way that it looks. I think that's one of the coolest parts about it. The materials are really high quality. Uh, it is not made from MDF, or it's made from actual, like, 12-ply plywood, so that's pretty awesome. Now, this material that they have on the inside here is very cool as well. A good premium-feeling product. But one of the coolest parts about this that I talked about when I did my last desk video is how the cable management works in these. So down in the rack here, you've got a couple options on the side cars. You've got a whole, huge hole out the back for cables, and then you've got a giant hole straight out the bottom. Now what's cool about that is that hole out the bottom comes out to a couple new options. So you've got one big hole out the back of the leg, and a slot out the very bottom of the leg, so your cables can run from your rack gear down through the hole and either you can either have them come out, which is what I'm gonna do to whatever's next to it, or you can have them come out to something lower, like a lower side car, or you can have them come out laying right on the floor here, which is very, very cool cable management. That is way awesome. Let's get all this unhooked, get some things shuffled around, get it put back together. The sidecar assembly went a little faster than I thought it would. But this is a massive undertaking because I got a session late tomorrow afternoon. So I, I got to have this done in 24 hours. Hopefully I don't have to go buy some more snakes. We'll see if I can get this all done. All right, here we go. Oh man, every single time I do this, I get so freaked out. Like what if I don't get this done in time? Okay, so it has quickly become apparent to me <laughs> that I'm gonna have to take all the gear out of the rack because the cables are so tangled in there. There's just no way for me to get them out to actually start over without <laughs> taking everything apart. So I guess I'm actually starting from scratch now. <sighs> So here is where we are currently at. Uh, I couldn't get any of the cables out without pulling all of the rack gear. Cause I only planned on removing the gear that, like the gear that actually was gonna get moved to actual different slots. 
and it just this did not work I, I took all the gear out and then I couldn't get the cables out because there were too many cables that were too like tied in with each other <laughs> or I have no idea I have no idea if I'm actually gonna be able to make my session tomorrow because this is like this is a lot this is a lot of work all right here's to trying my best I guess or something I need another espresso <laughs> Well, that certainly doesn't suck. Oh, that's so much wider. <laughs> that is so much wider than it used to be. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, it's like 11 p.m. and uh, it's time to load all the rack gear back in here. Uh, once it's all done, I'll run you guys through why I put everything where I put it, but... <laughs> that is just... All of this started because, well, one, you always need more rack space. Like, you always need more. But I really wanted one of these. So this is the Audioscape uh, V-Comp Deluxe. This is basically modeled after a stay level. I have wanted a stay level forever, for, li for literally forever. When I ordered this, they said, are you ever gonna buy a pair of them? Because you might want a stereo link in there. And I was like, I like pairs of stuff, better have a stereo link just in case. So they put a stereo link in there and here is what they called it. <laughs> Love those dudes over there, super pumped to have this in my room. This is as far as I'm getting tonight. It's a little after midnight, like 12.30 or something. Okay, it's uh, it's 8 a.m. Oh, I'm tired. Everything hurts. My body hurts. I'm getting old. There's a lot left to do. Mm. We gotta make short work of this. And then I think I'll do a whole studio tour and show you guys the new setup. I'm gonna get another espresso. Welcome to the new main angle, but first, espresso. Look at that crema. Well, I'm happy to report that I got the studio done. Uh, I made my session. I was still hooking stuff up when my client got here, but we got through the session. No one paid me to make this video, but there's links in the description down below to every single thing that you see in this video. Uh, and if you use those links, it helps the channel out a lot. It lets me keep making videos like this and I very much appreciate it. So let's get to the tour of this studio. Cheers, you guys. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. All right, so here is the main angle in the studio, but 
probably what's more important is this. So this right here is the new Danger Fox sidecar. This is the new addition. Now my other sidecar that is now over here used to be in that spot. But this sidecar didn't have the, the front armrest on it. And because I have my guitar amps right here, I figured this would be perfect to put this over here. It lived behind the guitar amps. I don't need an armrest. I don't need to really get to the patch bay super often. But I just felt like that was a much more uniform look over on this side. So I'm, uh, I'm really pumped about how that turned out. That looks really, really good to me. It feels really good. I've been working on it a couple weeks now. So let's just get right into it. In the new sidecar, I have the uh, XLR patch bay. This is just a pass through for my vocal microphones or when I'm recording guitar amps or, or whatever. This is just how I get into the whole rig. We've got my two Coil Audio CA70Ss. This is a headphone amplifier. This is now hooked up so that way I can run multiple headphone feeds in the studio so someone can be you know sitting on the couch back there and like have headphones on while the singer and myself all have headphones on so I'm pretty pumped about that uh, moving on up uh, this is the the power amp for the oratones right here this is a new addition I didn't used to have this power amp I was running uh, their prototype version of this for a long time pumped to have an official one you guys know all about the audioscape reverb already did a whole video on that my tube tech LCA 2b uh, which is my drum bus compressor and I track all my vocals through this the uh, drummer MC 2.1 one is my monitor controller as of right now. Handful of power conditioners up top. Uh, currently running the Apollo 16 Mark II, uh, 1176. Whole bunch of 500 series gear. Pair of Cappy Hyder Mike Pre's Serpent SB 4001, uh, Cappy LC40, Cappy FC 526, LC 25. FC 526, LC 25, FC 526, and BT 50. Uh, I have talked in previous videos about what I use all these for, so I won't bore you with that. Up here, batteries for the Apple Magic Mouse. Uh, I'm likely going to move to a new Magic Mouse that does not need the batteries, but that's for another video. Uh, this does not get used very often. This is a PV compressor, and I used this live, and when I was doing acoustic gigs, I used it for a long time. I don't really use it anymore. It's more just taking up space than anything else. And this is the bad boy that was the reason for this whole switch over or the reason that prompted me to do the whole switch over. So Audioscape V Comp Plus, basically a stay level. It sounds so good. Pair of Cappy VP28 Platinum microphone preamps, a pair of 52F50s uh, from AML. These are like DIY kits. Um, Neve style compressors. They sound really, really good. This is something that I'm testing right now and it is wild. There will probably be a video, a dedicated video on this coming as well, but that is, that is a crazy unit. A couple radial units and I'm testing right now these Pope Audio units. Uh, this Bax 2020 EQ is really good. And then that's the, the chorus. So those will probably show up in a video as well, but I'm really digging this on snare drum in addition to my snare drum EQ. In the final sidecar, we have the patch bays. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, Samson patch bays here and a Behringer patch bay. These are dry erase labels from Trace Audio. And so you can write on these uh, and mark all your inputs and outputs. And then you just take like an alcohol wipe and it comes right off, which is very, very cool. This is a power amp that I used to use for my NS10s. Lots of people used to ask about that. It's a Hoffler DH220. It's sitting here for now, just in case I decide to bring the NS10s back. I don't think I'm going to, I haven't had the need to yet, but it's there just in case. And then this old Digitech unit I used to use, but now it's just taking up rack space. Monitors, as you guys know, are the Focal Trio 11 BEs. Uh, just unreal monitors, I have videos on that. Uh, and then a pair of Oratone 5C mix cubes and I use those on every single mix. Lots of people ask about this monitor. It is a Samsung 34 inch ultra wide. I just got it from Amazon. There's links in the description below for that. The Focal Clear MG Pro headphones. And before we go over and talk microphones and stuff, let's look at Guitar Land. Uh, a bunch of Lauren audio pedals, which I am in love with. Uh, third power Citizen Gain CSR 40. Uh, the Supro Blackmagic Reverb, that's a new edition, it's been really fun. The Friedman Small Box 50, that's the Wildwood edition. Whole bunch of pedals. We've got a, uh, a couple PRSs and uh, some Iconic guitars 
and uh, acoustics, my Gibson and my Alvarez, and just a whole whole bunch of different stuff for guitars. Uh, Warwick bass that I play bass on a lot of stuff with. Let's go look at microphones. This is the Manly Reference Cardioid that uh, it really has gotten a lot of use since I got it. It is one of my very, very favorite microphones. So Manly Reference Cardioid. Uh, the Neumann TLM67, there's a whole video about that. I really love that microphone as well. Uh, I am currently testing out this Warm CX-12. I think that's the model number, the CX-12. Uh, there will be a video coming on this. They sent it to me to test. It sounds really good, so we're going to put it up against a real one and see how it does. The Lewitt LCT-1040, there's a whole video on that. It sounds really good. The Dave Perlman TM-47, uh, it's my favorite, like, 47 microphone. And the Bronner Panthera, Fanthera, Panthera, whatever. Okay, so over here is, uh, I've got a handful of these little shelves in the studio. These are just like $29 shelves from Lowe's or Home Depot. On this one, we've got all the power supplies, the Phantom power supply, and like the power supplies for all the microphones. Uh, if you put the top shelf down a little bit like that, it works great for stacking your cables up on it. Headphones, some microphone boxes, that sort of stuff on that one. Uh, there is the ISO cab. And so these are some new uh, RGB lights that I got for Phil. I, I just needed some more color in this studio, especially for YouTube. So if we come around here to this side, first of all, I think that is just one of the coolest looking things. <laughs> so long. It's like a long console up in here. Uh, but anyway, uh, we've got a... Uh, another one of these shelves, these are for all the speakers that go in the ISO cab, uh, and I've just got the router sitting on there as well. And then another one of the shelves, this is the most cluttered of them all, it's just the random stuff. Hard drives, tambourine shaker, some extra power cables, pens, the old trash can Mac Pro, that sort of stuff. And then this right here is the video editing station. So this is where all the videos are edited uh, and I'm mixing right here. I've got a Universal Audio Volt 2 interface, the uh, Mac Studio. I've got a whole video on that. Uh, I'm testing these right now. These are by uh, these are called the iLouds by IK Multimedia, uh, and they work really good for the video editing stuff. So I'm very pumped about that. Haven't actually mixed any music on them yet. But pretty cool setup, especially for something small like this where you don't have much desk space, but you still definitely want a monitor. So that is it. That is my home studio finally finished. I mean, I get it's probably never actually finished, but this has been the plan for a long time, and I'm super pumped to have finally got there. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to drop a comment, give me a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.